let's wrap it up with some best practices. In general, your behavior is often more important than what you actually invest in. For example, a lot of people know that the name of the game is buying low and selling high, but many investors break this rule. They sell after the market has fallen and then buy after it's already risen and seems safe. As the saying goes, the stock market is the only market in the world where the goods go on sale, but people are too afraid to buy. One question new investors have is if they should invest actively or passively. Mercedes has some good insight on the difference and which option may be a better choice. On the surface, active investing sounds like a better approach than passive investing. After all, we're prone to see active things as more powerful, dynamic, and capable. But in investing, active investing loses out most of the time to passive investing, and really, it's not even close. In fact, over time, more than 90% of active traders fail to beat similar passive investments. Active investing is what you see often in film and TV shows. It involves an analyst or a trader identifying an undervalued stock, purchasing it, and writing it to wealth. It's true, there's a lot of glamour in finding the undervalued needles in a haystack of stocks but it involves robust analysis and insight, immense knowledge of the market, and extensive work. In contrast, passive investing is all about taking a buy and hold approach, typically with an index of stocks. Passive investing avoids the analysis of individual stocks and trading in and out of the market. The goal of passive investors is to get the index's return. With low-fee mutual funds and ETFs now a reality, it's easier than ever to be a passive investor. And if you're still not convinced, you should know that it's also the approach recommended by legendary investor Warren Buffett. No matter how you feel about active versus passive investing, all experts recommend having a diversified portfolio. Basically, diversifying your portfolio means you put your money in different investments so that if one does poorly, you have other options to balance you out. Another way of putting it, don't put all your eggs in one basket. While your investment is performing well now, what happens if it starts to go downhill? Not to be pessimistic, but it's rare that the arrow always points up. There will likely be some dips too, which diversification can guard against. Experts recommended diversification not only because it mitigates risk, but also because it can increase your overall return without requiring you to sacrifice something in exchange, offering what economists call a free lunch. In other words, diversification can actually reduce your risk without costing your returns. In terms of stock, a diversified portfolio would contain 20 to 30 or more different stocks across many industries, but a diversified portfolio could also contain other assets, bonds, funds, real estate, CDs, and even savings accounts. As some of these assets are rapidly rising, others will remain steady or fall. In other words, these assets are not highly correlated with one another, and that's key to the appeal of diversification. Before we send you on your way, Mercedes is gonna break down some of the golden rules of investing for us. Absolutely, but before we do that, I wanna give credit to Bankrate senior investing reporter, Jim Royal, for these rules and for providing much of the content shared in this course. These are actually Jim's golden rules that I'll be reading, and I wanna make sure that he gets the credit when you ride them to your first million. All right, without further ado, here are the 10 golden rules of investing. Number one, never lose money. It was legendary investor Warren Buffett who said, rule number one is never lose money. Rule number two is never forget rule number one. What Buffett's rule essentially means is don't become enchanted with an investment's potential gains. Look for its downsides too. If you don't get enough upside for the risks you're taking, the investment may not be worth it. Number two, think like an owner. While many investors treat stocks like gambling, real businesses stand behind those stocks. Stocks are a fractional ownership interest, and the company's stock is likely to follow the direction of its profitability. To be an investor, you need to analyze the fundamentals and understand how the business could perform in the future. Number three, stick to your plan. Stick to a tried and true investment process, even if things become difficult in the short term. One of the best strategies for investors, a long-term buy and hold approach. You can buy stock funds regularly in a 401k, for example, and then hold onto it for decades. Number four, buy when everyone is fearful. 
When the market is down, investors often sell or simply quit paying attention to it. But that's when the bargains are out in droves. Number five, keep your investing disciplined. It's important that investors continue to save over time, in rough climates and good, even if they can only put a little bit away. By continuing to invest regularly, you'll get in the habit of living below your means, even as you build up a nest egg of assets in your portfolio over time. Number six, stay diversified. Keeping your portfolio diversified is important for reducing risk. Having your portfolio in only one or two stocks is unsafe, no matter how well they perform for you. So experts advise spreading out your investments in a diversified portfolio. Number seven, avoid timing the market. Experts routinely advise clients to avoid trying to time the market. That is, trying to buy or sell at the right time, as is popularized in TV and films. The idea here is that you need to stay invested to get strong returns and avoid jumping in and out of the market. Number eight, understand everything you invest in. Whatever you're investing in, you need to understand how it works. If you're buying a stock, you need to know why it makes sense to do so and when the stock is likely to profit. If you're buying a fund, you want to understand its track record and costs, among other things. If you're buying an annuity, it's vital to understand how the annuity works and what your rights are. Number nine, regularly review your plan. While it can be a good idea to set up a solid investing plan and then only tinker with it, it's advisable to regularly review your plan to see if it still fits your needs. You can do this whenever you check your accounts for tax purposes. And lastly, number 10, stay in the game and have an emergency fund. It's absolutely critical that you have an emergency fund, not only to tide you over during a tough time, but also so that you can stay invested long-term. If you have to sell some of your investments during a rough spot, it's often likely to be when they are down. So with an emergency fund, you're actually able to stay in the investing game longer. Amazing. Thanks, Mercedes. And huge shout out to Jim Royal for letting us share his golden rules of investing with all of you. Now that you've learned about it, it's time to take action and start investing yourself. Remember, success in investing often isn't solely based on what you invest in. It's also often dependent on your behavior with your stocks. Start small, stay strong, and have some fun with it. Also, don't forget to always have an emergency fund. You never know when you might need it. I can't wait to see what you do with all your new know-how. If you're looking for more, we've linked a ton of great resources for you in the episode description. Check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.